In this portion of the training, we'll be discussing how to set up and edit your Skills Tracker programs. When you log into Course Key, you will click on Management and Programs to go to where your Skills Tracker will live. Once in your Programs tab, what you will do is click Add Program in the top right corner. Once you click that, it's going to ask you a couple of questions. What is the name of your program? So you're going to put the name of your program here. Next, you're going to put the program ID. So you can probably put um, just a shortened version of your program, something to identify it. You're going to select your campus if you have access to multiple campuses. Lastly, what you're going to do is decide if you would like your attendance hours from your courses to pull in as one of your columns in your Skills Tracker program. If you would like it to display in Skills Tracker and you have attendance, you can toggle this on. Otherwise, you can skip that part. Then you'll click Next, and this is where you will actually begin editing and creating your program. Your Skills Tracker program is going to be comprised of multiple checklists, and each checklist will have skills within that checklist. In order for a student to complete the entire program, they need to complete the checklist in every, the skills in every checklist. To begin, what you'll do is click Add Checklist, and you will type in the name of your first checklist. Each checklist needs to have a unique name. So this could be Checklist 1. You will select if you would like your checklist to be based on amount or time. For example, would you like a student to complete 10 haircuts or 10 hours of haircutting or perhaps 10 blood draws or 10 hours of drawing blood? It's up to you which one you would rather um, it be based out of. Next, you're going to select for this specific checklist what settings you would like. Would you like to require staff to grade permissions? If so, you can toggle this on, and you would just select if you would like it to be on a scale out of 5 or out of 100. Next, you would, like to, you would need to select if you would like your students to submit checklist items or if you would like your program to be completely instructor-led. Next, you'll decide if you would like to allow your students to go over the required count. This doesn't mean that your students will get extra credit for the, the skills that they um, submit that are above the required amount. It's just for extra practice. So it's going to cap your students at the required amount as far as their credit. However, they can um, submit more for practice and then get feedback on that. Um, requiring students to be checked in, this can be applicable if your school uses a course key for attendance. So this would require a student to be checked into a course in order to submit a checklist item from the course key application. You can also select if you would like to require students to upload media with their submissions. What this means is that your student will be required to submit either a photo, a document, or a video with their skills tracker submission. They won't be able to bypass that step. So if you have some skills that maybe will not require or will not have an applicable document or a photo or a video, you can skip this one. You don't need to. If you turn this on, it means that your students will be required to submit a media. Otherwise, if you leave this toggled off, then your students can always upload a media, but they're not required to. Um, require students to submit items in order. This means that you will require the student to submit or complete the first item before moving on to the next item. So the order would actually matter. Lastly, you would like uh, to, if you would like to require notes for approved submissions. Now by default, all of your rejections, so if an instructor goes to reject a submission, those will always require notes. However, this is an optional if you would like your instructors to also be required to provide notes for approved submissions. So either way, rejections will require notes. However, if you would like approvals to also require notes, you can toggle this on as well. So you can go ahead and look at these. These are going to be specific to each checklist. So each checklist can have its own settings. 
Once you start populating your checklist, the checklist uh, will populate here. And then which, within each one, you can start adding your checklist items. So I can add an item here. For example, I can do um, haircuts. I can require maybe 25 haircuts. Um, you can add a identification number if you would like. If you use Fame, then you'll probably add an identification number. You can have a description in here if you would like, but that's also optional. Um, so you can add as many or as little as you would like. So you can say, um, let's say perms. You can always um, move around the order of your skills. You can also delete a skill. You can also go in and edit a skill if you would like. So you can go in here and edit it. Um, to add another checklist, you can add checklist. So checklist two, for example, you can make this one out of hours, let's say, and then click save. And then you'll go into this checklist and add your skill and the amount. So let's say how many hours, so two hours, let's say. Remember, you can always go back and forth between the different checklists um, and populate these in here. You can also duplicate checklists. So if I want to duplicate this one, I can click duplicate and just change the name. So you'll go in here and duplicate it. Um, so you can just go into each of these and edit it as you would like. So let me add another skill in here. Let's say blood draws. Two of these, save. Then you'll click next. Once you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll click save program and this will save your program in order for you to be able to go in and edit the program. You can always go in here and you can archive your program, duplicate the program if you would like. When you click on the name of your program, it's gonna take you um, to these checklists that you created. So you can expand these. And what you can always do is go in and edit them. So you can go back into this editing mode um, and you can add more. So if you would like to add more in here, so let's say blow dry style, we'll put one of these. This one will have, let's say we can add You can click next and you can save it again. So really you can go in here and edit them as much as you would like to, but when you're done editing them, what you will do is click this publish button. Once you click this publish button, students and faculty will be able to begin using the program and there's very little that you can actually edit within the program. So you just wanna keep that in mind before you click the publish button. So when you click publish, it's gonna ask you, would you like to publish the checklist? You cannot edit a, a checklist once it is published. So there's something to keep in mind. Notice at the top here, you have three different tabs. The program info tab is going to only be visible to admins who will have the ability to make edits to the program and add students to the program. The program progress and the checklist are going to be um, managed by instructors and by admins. So this is the only tab that is specific to admins because it has all the setup involved. So within this program info tab, you have your overview, which is where you can edit all of your programs and publish all of your checklists, but it's also where you can add your students. So if you click on all students here, um, this is where you'll be able to see the students that you added populate in here. What you can do to add students is click add students in the top right corner. And you can either upload it as a CSV file if you have um, many students, or you can enter in their emails uh, if that's what you would prefer. If you want to upload a CSV file, you would create a CSV file that has three columns. The first column will have emails, second columns will have start, and the third column will say end. And the start means their start date, and the end means their end date or their grad date. So you can create a file with these three columns and drag and drop your file into here. And then you can check this box to default all users status to active. And what this will do is when you enter in all of the students into your program, it will automatically make them active, meaning that they'll be able to view the program. They'll be able to start engaging with the program um, that way.
To enter emails, uh, what you would just do is you would start typing in the email of the person that you would like to add to the program. And you can enter in their start date if you would like, uh, but this is optional and you can add in their end date, so their anticipated grad date, and you can default them to active and then you can click submit. Um, remember the people that, the students that you add to your program will not be able to view the checklist until you actually publish the checklist. So you can go ahead and populate your students in here, but they won't be able to engage with the material until you actually publish those checklists. So just something to keep in mind. Also, as we discuss adding students to programs, keep in mind that you will not need to add admins to programs and you will not need to add faculty to programs. Your faculty and admins will all be able to access programs through the programs tab within course key. Here's an example of a program that I created. It's called Respiratory Therapy. These are all of the checklists that are involved in this program. So you can expand each of them and it'll give you kind of a description of each of the skills and how many amounts are required. Once you close um, out of these, it'll just show you the name of each of the checklists, the names and the total amount required next to that. And it'll show you if they're published or unpublished. If a checklist is published, it'll mean that your students and faculty will be able to view it. If it's not published, only you, the admin, can view this information. To add students, um, again, you'll go to all students and add your students. The students that are added are going to appear in a list form here. You'll see their names. You'll see the groups that they're um, associated to, their start dates, and their anticipated end dates. You'll also see their statuses in here as far as active or dropped or graduated, also the placement status. And lastly, this column will show you the last day that the student actually um, had any movement as far as skills tracker. You can always edit this information by clicking on the three gray dots next to the student's information and click edit info. Here you have the ability to drop the student from the program, graduate them from the program, place them on LOA or canceled. You can also put them as a future start. You have the ability to edit this information and once you are done editing, you can click submit and it will update this information. Once your checklists are published, then your faculty will be able to go into this checklist tab here and to select their checklist that they would like to take a look at, and they will be able to look at the approval queue or the student progress, which is um, in more detail in another video, but this basically this checklist um, is going to be where you upload or you input all of the skills or the attempts of skills. The approval queue will be where all of your students will be submitting skills if you have allowed them to do so. And the student progress will be where the faculty has the ability to enter in or upload skills when students have completed them. We also have the program progress, which is a view only tab. And this is going to be viewable by both your admins and your faculty. You'll see a list of all of your students who are in the program, their groups, their start dates, and their end dates. And you'll also be able to see all of the checklists that have been published and how far along your students are within these, these checklists. So you'll be able to see the name of the checklist, how many are required for the students to complete, and for each of your students, how many they've actually completed. So you'll be able to kind of compare them to each other and see who the stragglers are. For example, here it would be Renee for manual resuscitation. You can also filter by groups if you would like, if that's a function that you're utilizing within course key. Um, you can search by a student's name. You can also look at it in a percentage mode instead of a number mode. But that's pretty much the setup and the early stages of it. If you have any questions regarding um, any other details as far as skills tracker, please let us know and we would be more than happy to answer your specific questions. Thank you.